to uh, the webinar. So, accounting people are dropping in. Um, we are about to start, and if you, uh, we can have an interactive uh, session today as well. Um, uh, but when you're not speaking in the beginning right now, maybe it's a good idea to uh, mute um, your microphone, and you can enjoy your lunch while um, listening to Sören. And um, today is um, a great um, pleasure for me uh, for our final webinar of the course. We've been going on for 20 weeks now almost. Um, to uh, top it off, um, we always should finish uh, on a high note, I guess, and we will uh, do this, I think, with the um, with contemporary topic, digital transformation, and the special guest Sören Schönemann from Digital, um, from Language Wire. And um, uh, um, Sören has been a former colleague and uh, boss of mine at the former company and um, IT security company, now with LanguageWire and uh, um, very, um, uh, Sören, you have a lot of experience on the topic of tr digital transformation. I'm um, going to talk about an, a case from a Swedish company working with um, a digital transformation <coughs> project. And I think it fits very well into our course now coming to the end of the course when people are working with their project reports, thinking about how, what we, how we can implement things in our uh, project, in our companies. And um, yeah, without further ado, I hand over the uh, floor to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jörg. For the kind words and introduction let me just a bit of uh, housekeeping should i share my presentation or i, would I you can share your presentation? i can share the um, screen i can i can i guess i can do that as well let me share my screen because then i've got control over uh, when to flick the pages oh all right you've done it already no problem whatsoever Is that fine? Well, uh, yeah that's absolutely fine i'll just uh, let you know when when to flick the page yeah so again uh, thank you very much um you yeah, just uh, before we get started for you guys to put a language wire into perspective we're, we're a business that advise uh, other companies on global content challenges uh, and provide workflow optimization uh, in 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 a global content context if you like so i think translation from an international and So, and can you hear me? Okay. Now it's... Yeah, I, I, now it's okay, fine. we're back. I also lost audio temporarily, but I'm back now. I can hear you. Okay. All right. Sorry well, about let, this. I don't know. That's what... all right. I'm not sure how, how much of that uh, you lost, but uh, let me just continue on, on where, where I was talking about uh, the, the transformation of established uh, companies into a more digital uh in, into a di digital phase of their existence and it's something that many organizations have actually battled with for a number of times and and <clears throat> we'll look at a, a somewhat flexible uh, pragmatic approach uh, to the top yeah and I think you on the next page you've actually already already introduced uh, myself uh, and my role. It's it's right that we did have 
uh, a bit of uh, experience working together, Jörg. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I wish I could say that you were a nice guy, but um, hey, you can't win them all. Uh, we did, however, had had some good uh, good moments uh, together uh, in 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 a commercial part, and I've uh, since then. Uh, been in the area of uh, of the commercial elements, where I'm now with LanguageWire responsible for the full customer interface and and every uh, touch points um, uh, towards the customer, which actually makes me uh, a best fit customer or digital customer owner uh, my uh, myself. Since some of the challenges that I'm facing as a commercial owner is to uh, transform our business into uh into a more moving away from an analog into a, a digital phase if you if you'd like if you could flick um a switch plate turn plates so digital transformation i think it, it goes without saying that it's it's changed uh human society uh, or, or transformation in itself it, it is transforming um society as we know it and just like we saw with the electricity, as we saw with the steam engine, as we've seen with petrochemicals, it's it's a it's a massive innovative way that is sort of changing society as we know it in in these years and impacting into almost everything. Uh, a, a digital transformation comes out of technology, and technology is what drives digital transformation at its core. And it's actually not something new. It's been around for for the past 20 years or for, for many, many years. But now we're seeing that the, the, uh, the product life cycle is, is really shortening and it's, it's being introduced with an even more rapid speed. And now for businesses like the ones you represent, it's about navigating this extremely confusing uh, landscape of new technologies and put it into context of the challenges that you have. And once you do that, that's when you will digitally transform. Uh, and that's what this scope is about. I'm, I'm about to give you some, some learning techniques and an approach to navigate in the landscape and define a step, a step, step forward on, uh, on how to approach uh, uh, or benchmark your own digital uh, transformation uh, process. And I'm going to do that in, in context of customer experience. If you could go to the next page, please, Jörg. Before we start to dig into the actual approach, I just want to share uh, some some um, uh, some statistics on digital transformation as a search term, uh, and what I'm trying to um, uh, trying to bring forward here is a definition on when does digital transformation become a topic. It's been around for a long time. You see, all the way back to 2008, organizations were starting to to Google or search for the understanding and the meaning of digital transformation. But it, it it has really only taken off since 2014, somewhere in the middle of 2014 uh, and, and uh, is when it started to uh, take off. So that uh, leaves the term less than five years in its, its lifetime at, at, at this point. It's a small dip in, in 17. We'll get to that on the next page, Jörg, if you could. Yes. It's hard to say who started uh, the sort of the ownership of, of digital transformation. But if we go back to 2014, we could see that uh, uh, Forrester research team started to sort of take ownership of the, uh, of the topic digital transformation. They started to host a number of events. They started to uh, really publish an extensive number of research articles around the topic and started to sort of take ownership of the, the conversation and dialogue around that. Also in 2015, we saw that the World Economic Forum and Accenture in a joint collaboration started what was called the Digital Transformation Initiative, DTI, which had the purpose of studying and researching the impact of digitalization on organization. And that definitely also was a, an incubator on, on, on a fuel engine, if you'd like, to, uh, to, to, to create more appetite uh, for the term. And what we're seeing here towards the end, if you could see that for the pictures, I'm not so sure, is that by November 17, it's sort of fading out. It's a small drop in, in the search term. Uh, if it's peaked already, uh, or if it was just a hype, well, that's too early to say. But if we are to look from a, from a technology perspective on hype term, uh, on the next page, I'll make, I'll make reference to Gartner's hype cycle, which is an understanding of, uh, of the different phases technology. Uh, so singular technologies will go through um, throughout its, its life cycle. 
And it's not for me to actually go in depth of the different stages, but I'll just quickly define what happens in, in the different stage. And then on the next slide, I'll show some technologies on where they, uh, in, in its current form, or right now where we are today, uh, are positioned uh, on this uh, hype cycle, uh, if you'd like. It's not a customer life cycle. It's different to that. It is a hype cycle. At the back of the hype cycle, that's when the uh, product life cycle sort of starts, uh, if, if you'd like. Anyway, point number one, that's the innovative trigger. It's a, it's a potential technology breakthrough. And uh, it, it is the concept or the stage of, of early proof of concept stories. So it's not even a technology at this point in time. It's just a, it's a good story. And there are many great stories today around artificial intelligence and uh, the automobile industry and driverless cars and you can fly to the moon and whatever have you that are at this point in the, in the innovation, uh, innovation trigger stage. So there's no usable products that exist and there's no uh, commercial uh, viability uh, proven at, at this point. The next page, uh, stage is the peak of inflated expectations. That's when you really start to get excited about, uh, about the technology. And that's when you start to, to see the, the first success stories. So robotics, uh, driverless cars uh, at the peak where, where you see that, well, hang on, there's actually something behind this technology. Maybe at an infant level uh, where it's, it was still not viable, but still the, you start to believe in, in the technology. Um, a lot of organizations start to invest and uh, try things out, it, it, especially from a technology owner perspective. Many at this uh, stage will not prevail and will actually fail in delivering a viable product. Uh, from a market and a high perspective, we then move on to the, uh, the, tr uh, the trough of dissolution. Uh, the next stage, which is the the interest uh, wanes of experience and the implementations they fail to deliver. Uh, okay, you promised me driverless cars. Yeah, I can see I've got an autopilot. Okay, you promised me uh, artificial intelligence, but really it's just machine learning. Uh, so uh, producers of the technology, they either go south and, and, and lose out and the business case and the story didn't uh, keep up or they, they start to deliver more and more against the story that the hype uh, created at, at that point in time. And then, then we move on to the slope of enlightenment into the next stage and that is uh, where the, uh, the technology can start to benefit the organizations that have invested into that. So now we're actually starting to see the early signs of an, uh, a promise or delivery against uh, the expectations of a given uh, technology. And more organizations, enterprise level, are starting to create pilots and proof of concepts around a given uh, technology in order to really find out uh, whether or not this is, this is viable. And that takes us to the last stage of the hype cycle, which is the plateau of productivity. That is when you have the main street adaptation that starts to take off the criteria for assessing whether or not a provider is good or bad, whether or not a technology will prevail or fail is, is proven at that point. And you see a mass adaptation of a technology into that phase. And you can say, okay, it's gone through the hype. It's viable. It's technology that we can believe in. And when we are talking about digital transformation, remember that we are talking about the combination of technology. So if you go to the next page, uh, Jörg, uh, now put into context on some different technologies in these stages, you will start to see that the technology of uh, the technology landscape is constantly changing. And, uh, and affects customer interaction and internal processes. I mean, the cloud mobility, uh, social networks, uh, IT as such, is, is going through the hype and it's viable. But at the back of that, you've got internet of things that should combine the things and, and enhance it, which is really, I mean, it's peaked, it's going into the, the, the trough of disillusionment. Internet of things was promised so much more and should be such a big uh, initiative, but it's not built on the same platform. You don't have system interacting. You have it in its, in its isolated environment, but it hasn't gone to a delivery stage where you can see productivity and enlightenment in it as a technology. And then at the very innovation stage, you see AI, you see, uh, uh, you, you see uh, technologies that, that are still just at this point 
fantastic stories, but far from from a, a commitment and and a delivery. And I think as as companies or businesses, what you need to is first of all continuously transform your business model and processes to adapt these new technologies that have gone through the hype and are sustainable in order to to uh, uh, <clears throat> to um, yeah, survive or, or, or embrace and adapt to the uh, to 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 your pace. So you need to adapt and embrace these technologies at its right time and put them into combination. And once you do that, that is when you will uh, that's when you will start to transform uh, digitally. So what's the conclusion on this? Uh, well, get used to uh, multiple technologies being uh, introduced. Uh, get used to uh, assessing these technologies against its uh, against its maturity level in the various stages, and once it's ready for you, your organization once it's mature in the market, it's gone through the high its productivity, start to introduce it. And if you go go to the next uh, slides, um, I've actually <clears throat> here's here's the thing you will hear really often: you need to disrupt, you need to you need to transform, or otherwise you'll be out of business. Well. We actually had a guest speaker on one of our webinars here from Langeswai, uh, a professional called uh, Jens Haso. He's a former um, Boston consultant, uh, consultancy group, global lead for marketing. Uh, now he's non-executive chairman and, and, and a board member for several international organizations. But he has also a topic on, uh, on the uh, digital transformation uh, as a book. And he stated that uh, we are, we're now when talking about um, digital transformation. We're getting beyond the scare tactics of this uh, disrupt or die nonsense. Uh, it, it, it is, it is, uh, it's, not, it's not what everyone should do. We shouldn't all break out and, and create a cluster uh, startups. Um, investors and executives, they're much more level-headed now. They understand the concept of digital transformation much better. So they know that it's not a matter of uh, uh, creating an IT company into a gumboot uh, company or the other way around, like we saw with Nokia as an example, but it's much rather than just, okay, let's just calm down. Let's just try to understand what are the technologies we need to master to leverage and, and harvest uh, the benefits from, uh, fr from, from the space that we're in. Uh, there's a recognition that it's, it's, it's dynamics that varies across multiple industries. And, and it's not a one size fits all. It's not a silver bullet that, okay, you want to digital, I mean, you want to digitally transform. Okay, you need to download this file and then just follow the path. No, it is unique to the individual organization and their requirements. And then again, in the combination of technologies is where you find what is useful of you. Uh, and then there is a notion that it's definitely a need for cross-functional collaboration to identify the business models to satisfy, satisfy your customers' needs. Uh, and, and be profitable with that. So it's not it's not a project in IT. It, it's a cross organizational project that you all need to adapt to. And if you don't do that, well, you're creating spin-offs that don't have a, 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 a that are not sustainable in your own business environment uh, long term. So we're really fundamentally coming to the point where it's not disrupt or die, or die but it's definitely it's it's not a matter of if companies should uh, should. Uh, should embrace digital transformation, but it's more around how they should uh, em embrace it. So I think uh, if you flit, flit, switch the slide, Jörg, that takes us to the uh, to the actual approach on on <clears throat> on how should we successfully uh, transform uh, digitally, and and I guess for any organization, uh, our organization as well as your organization, it starts with your objective, obviously. What is your objective? And the objective can be many different things. It could be top line growth. It could be customer experience, customer satisfaction, average revenue per user, uh, reduced churn rates, uh, more engaged uh, uh, customers, whatever personalization. The objective can be differently. However, the KPIs and the actual process stays the same. If you go to the next page. And what we're gonna go through uh, on the next, I think four or five slides is, is the actual a very simple process uh, laid out by Jens Hasso uh, on on a on a on a on, on a pragmatic four-step approach to digital transformation, and it should act as a pragmatic way or simple way for uh, people like yourself, business leaders, either at the top or at the middle, who are directly or indirectly responsible for parts of the uh, the digital transformation, and 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 it's also 
at its core, very simple and very intuitive uh, to work with. So we're moving away in this model, at least, from a long range strategic planning process into a process where we embrace a much shorter sprints and faster evaluation of various technological te technologies and initiatives. And we're gonna do that in context of a customer of ours called SSAB, where we will uh, assess each of the four stages in this model against their uh, situation, if you like, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what came out of that. So if we move to the first step, Jörg? Yeah, the first step is the outlook. And uh, this is to create as much transparency as possible as to what is going on. Uh, it sounds to many pretty, you know, trivial. Yeah, yeah, got that. Of course, it's inside. Uh, but actually, many organizations, they fail to keep a proper outlook on, uh, uh, on what's happening in the customer community. They simply lack to pay attention to customer needs and what is happening on the startup uh, scene. So. Um, uh, there are many great startups that are utilizing and exploring in the hype cycle early stages. It is not something to uh, neglect. You still, as an organization, should still keep track of it and try to understand what's going on. A lot of organizations do that. And here it's not about being an expert or a graduate from Singularity University in California. Uh, no, it's rather just, you know, just keep your eyes and ears open. Be interested in, in the tech community that is related to your business. What's happening in the fintech? What new platforms are emerging? What are the customers' demands on, on that space? And put those things together. Maybe, just maybe there's something you haven't considered, or something you haven't uh, paid uh, notice of together. Obviously, you, put that, you need to put that into context of what your objectives is. And if you move to the next stage, add... And in the case of SSAB, and just a notion on or, or note on what SSAB is, is, it's a global company that develops high strength steel production and, and construction solutions that are based out of Stockholm in Sweden. It's a global company with 16,000 people worldwide, and they operate in more than 50 countries. Uh, it's one of the largest steel manufacturers or producers in, in Europe. And back in 2014, when, when they were sort of faced with a new digital objective they had just acquired a finnish company called rookie uh, and they started uh, to have three brands three companies operating under the ssab brand um, and that make it made it an enormous cumbersome and difficult task to manage and align business processes across the product range and um uh put that into context of one of the pain points is that a lot of the pain points visiting SSAB's website or seeking information on, on SSAB, uh, what they investigated and found out was that 80% of those customers uh, that visit their, their community online, they're actually looking for, for product information. And one of the main pain points and challenges was to make a full product portfolio easy to understand uh, easy to find and easy to search across the three platforms or three brand, brands that they had. A second challenge was to improve and make the customer experience relevant for the more than two and a half million users uh, of, of visitors on the website from the 50 countries that they operate in. So that was sort of like the pain point and the objective uh, that, that, they, that they started out with and they, they started to do uh, the research uh, around that to see what, what, uh, what, did, where, and what did they need to invest uh, into? And that m it took them into the second stage, which is the next slide, Jörg. This is where you want to uh, take some or make some decisions in regards to what you're going to do and, and certainly what you're not going to do. Now, remember, there are so many technologies, there's so many systems, there's so many different routes that you can take. Um, you can't just sit and wait and say, okay, let's just, just observe this space and, and, and wait for someone else to give us the answer or the industry to mature into, into an understanding of where we should go because then you will surely not prevail in the long term. So you need to take some calculated risk. But it's, it's, um, it, it's about taking the right decisions or close to right decisions in very turbulent wa waters. So opposed to... And this is the recommendation on the second stage, opposed to planning long-term and drafting everything, just get started, right? Um, go into a, a manageable number of uh, directions, initiatives that you want to invest into, where you have the resources and where you have the capability and get started, take some decisions on that. Um, 
need to uh, you'll of course need to put some markers and, and, and some potential destinations for where you want to go with these decisions before you execute on them. But you need to take decisions at this point. You can't just sit and wait and, and have this whole master plan uh, being developed. And if you go to the next slide, in the context of, next slide, in the context of SSAB, they took decisions on, uh, on, uh, on, on these markers that I'm going to mention now and milestones, one of them being they wanted to significantly improve lead management. They wanted to invest into systems that could capture more leads and identify customers in their purchase lifecycle. Okay, that's, that's okay. Uh, they wanted to uh, align better content production and give their customers an omni-channel experience. So, how do you do that, right? And they wanted more advanced localization process. They wanted more original content to be slow, sh showed in local countries. They wanted uh, language specific uh, search engine optimized context, content. And they wanted the content to be showed in, in, in local languages depending on geographical uh, lo location. And for them, it was about getting into the third step, which are at now, uh, the execution against that. And for SSAB, as for any organization, excuse me, it's implementing a number of initiatives and test these initiatives under price pressure, just like SSAB did. <clears throat> and you need to set some reasonable, not unreasonable timelines and deadlines against the KPIs and the milestones against your objectives. And uh, what you need to do is you, you need to require some or you need to have some dedicated resources that facilitates this process that, that drops into, into project mode and test these new systems in parallel with your normal business. This could be uh, probably uh, some use external uh, consultants to do this, some use offsite uh, spin offs, some use eager beta customers to facilitate this. Our point here is that um, <clears throat> that's all great and it's also advisable both to use external consultancies it's also advisable to use uh, most uh, minimal viable products or beta customers or project managers to facilitate this. But you need at a minimum at the execution level to include the entire organization. Because if you succeed with this, then you need to transform the entire organization. Then you can't have a successful project uh, owner, uh, project team uh, in the corner of your business that have a great use case story and use case and then they need to sell it in. It's part of the transformation that you include and embed this, uh, this sprint approach in the entire organization. You don't have to do it for the entire organization, but you need to have key stakeholders in, 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 across uh, everywhere. And for, next slide please, and for SSAB, this turned into a, a new website, turned into a new infrastructure for, uh, for the content management uh, system. And <clears throat> they, they started to roll out uh, of course, all the, the new content, uh, aligned content and brand message into, into various uh, pages. But uh, they, they started to work with so much more rich content from the very beginning. And uh, this meant that they had to uh, translate a, approximately a thousand words in 10 languages every single day. Now, normally without digital integration, that would not be possible unless you had an army of uh, of translators uh, across 50, 50, uh, 50 languages where they, where they were uh, operating in. But through uh, switching to a more uh, streamlined content workflow process with the new CMS system and integration to uh, players like ourselves to manage workflows, they really improved the customer uh, experience. Um, and if we go to the next stage before I say what the outcome of their investments was, the final step is then where you, where you make the evaluation of your initiatives and you course correct if that is, uh, if that is the case. You can't be uh, spot on the first time. There will be, uh, of course, uh, investments and directions that are, are not the right ones. What is important here is that you, um, you manage your portfolio's initiative tightly and you follow your KPIs and your metrics. And if they deviate from uh, your expectations or the success criteria, you, you need to chop them off, uh, delete the projects and move on. It is the mindset of becoming failing fast, failing cheap. So don't 
failing slowly and failing expensively, but the opposite. Because if you do that, you will be much quicker in your transformation. You will embrace many different uh, technologies and learn along the way. And you will take a, a, a much lesser risk for your organization. <clears throat> we had actually a, a, a blog that you can also find on our, on our website. It's called the case for digital transformation. Uh, where we advise at this stage that you go in and uh, use beta deployment as a process to gather further, further intelligence. It is a, a recommendation that you implement an ongoing process for measuring the progress for the metrics against your customers. It is the recommendation of levering the insights. So expect surprises and be ready to manage these surprises that you get from feedback. Uh, and then uh, it's, a, it's a recommendation of evaluate each digital initiative and refine the digital vision as you progress. So get old initiatives out that didn't work, get new initiatives into the broad group. And then, of course, gather the learnings as you, you go along. So on the next page, in the case of evaluation for, uh, for SSAB, uh, <clears throat> their website, as I've, I think I mentioned already, have approximately two and a half million visitors annually. And uh, the new website yields approximately 15,000 downloads per month. Uh, their choices that they made on digital transformation actually result in a fivefold of generation of leads. And remember, they wanted to create more uh, rich customer experience. They want to have content in local languages. So their digital transformation was not, you know, wasn't transformative in, in the eyes of average Joe. Nonetheless, the decisions and what they tested out led to a fivefold increase. And, and, and their website certainly met or exceeded the KPIs that they set for, for lead generation or lead handling for increasing the cross sales and, and, uh, and, uh, and up sales. And um, yeah, so I think it's a quote here on, uh, on, on SSAB where they said that the new website uh, provide true value for the customers and the stakeholders. And in their own view, it was a remarkable transformation building the product database in Sidecore and moving to from a more static product sheet to a more dynamic, generated, personalized information product uh, environment in an omnichannel experience. And that's the benefit that, that they have. So more than 500% increase in leads, and, and it, became, uh, it became a, a huge uh, generator for the success that they are having now in a an, in an lead uh, inbound perspective. So if you go to the, I think the few slides left here, one of the final slides, the, the model as such is that this flexible, uh, fairly pragmatic four-step approach around digital transformation, get started with it. It goes into loops, so you need to repeat it, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a way for you guys as leaders uh, of new or established businesses uh, with a digital transformation requirement to jump into it without really losing hair like myself, uh, or losing sleep because you need to plan long term, uh, but rather embrace short term sprints and evaluate as you uh, you go along. So I really hope that the model in itself uh, was beneficial and, and had some value. So the, the final slide, I believe, is just some takeaways uh, from from my 20 minutes here. It is uh, act now, don't wait. Uh, transformation is is definitely necessary to uh, to um, to be relevant uh, to be successful in the world that we live in today um, digital transformation is an effect of technological change but it's also an ongoing process understand which uh, elements of technology that are relevant and mature enough for your organization to be put into context don't go for the early adopters and the innovative uh, trends. Go for the ones where there are productivity and there are enlightenment in the hype cycle. Use the flexible four-state cycle of outlook, decision, execution, and evaluation to manage, uh, manage change. And then the final one, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The wheel. Uh, work with partners who can help you reach your goals. Uh, take manageable initiatives uh, along the way and, uh, and I'm sure you will do a lot better than you did yesterday. Um, so that was the, I think, I guess, Jörg, that was the, the kind words uh, from myself uh, today. So, yeah. of course, if there's any questions on, so what happened, so what will I do next, uh, or have you self-transformed language wire, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's the time. 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Søren. Really interesting. Really, really a lot of connections, I think, I see uh, to what we sp spoke about the, during the course and how, an, how the implementation for any customer experience uh, project would go, uh, would take place uh, to involve everyone uh, in the organization. So, um, yeah. Don't uh, be shy and use your chance to uh, grill Søren now. If you have a question or... Otherwise, I write the question if you don't want to. Uh, yeah, if you you can use the chat room as well, if you wanted to. We've seen that this was been this was working for sure as well. Oh. Go ahead, Sorry, Ryan. Yep. Um, first of all, thanks for awesome presentation. It uh, was very interesting and uh, a lot of insights, uh, at least for me, I found there. Thank and you. the question is, how much time does it take on average? Uh, for, for the company to transform because I guess it's not the process when you come on Monday and you and the whole company works on another way mm, Absolutely, so the, the question is, is you, how long will it take for organizations to transform? Well, it's it's not a quarterly sprint. That's for sure uh, it, It's a long-term process that uh, in, in the case of SSAB that took them more than two years right two years from from the from the decision until they had some um, some some statistical evidence that they were going in the right direction. So I think you need at, at minimum, depending on how aggressively you want to jump into this and how many systems you want to um, put into play, uh, you need to set aside uh, with the uh, appropriate amount of resources a couple of years before you start until you end. And I can, I mean, should I reflect on our own uh, company here at LanguageWire, when I stepped in and been in the position for three years, we were certainly an analog business. We didn't have CRM systems. We didn't have a proper CMS system. We did not have integration into, into, into key functions on marketing automation. We didn't even have integration and management of, of our sales enablement tools. And, uh, and, and, but, but yet our, our expectations to deliver it were going up 20% every year. 20% on top line, but flat on uh, cost expectations. And that's so, so that's, that's the discrepancy and the challenge that you're seeing in the markets. And we needed to embrace technology. We needed to implement systems. We needed to integrate from our customer uh, management systems or website into a translation management system to keep up with multiple languages on our website. We needed to integrate a sales enablement tool uh, in order to keep up uh, with, with market requirements or on, on solution setting approaches. We needed to create um, a link between our platform and the environment and, and the user experience on the platform and align that with our experience in an online uh, environment as well as creating an, you know, an omni-channel experience. So if you went to an event or if you received print materials or if you were in a demo environment, it was the same experience and our salespeople uh, knew where our customers were so they didn't have to start with the qualification and identification with new customers but they could through the system see that okay i can see you've downloaded this experience i've seen you you've been so many minutes on our website at this topic i can see you uh, participated in uh, in an event in stockholm regarding uh, epi uh, or whatever and 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 you know getting things to to play together and for us that has also been a and we're still doing it, uh, but for now, I mean, we're, we're two and a half, three years into it. it. It takes a lot of time. We're probably two years into it, to be fair, and I think it will continue because new technologies will emerge. Uh, we will continue to have growth expectations without uh, receiving, um, you know, uh, the same amount of, of a cost, uh, cost to cover uh, the expectations. Hey, yoga. Yeah. Uh, can, can I, uh, as, a, as a question been answered? Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Soren, for the presentation. Uh, my name is Abbas Towade. Uh, I'm an alumni of the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, but just now, uh, I'm sitting in uh, Abuja, the uh, uh, capital city of Nigeria. So I'm not in Sweden at the moment. Okay. Uh, guess, that's why I've been uh, uh, lately absent from the course. I've not no followed problem. up, but uh, this is the last. I don't want to miss this part and the guest lecture. Thank you very much for Soren for the case Thank study. You,
Thank you. Uh, so my, my, my question is, um, can the same principle, because SSAB uh, is a matured company, am I right? Yes. Okay, now, can, can the same principle SSAB is using to, digital, to, 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 do, to, to, to go into digital transformation, can it be used for startup at the same time? Because I, I have been in a startup environment for, for some time now, and one of the products we are developing uh, recently for Nigeria, it's a, it's a digital receipting and invoicing platform for small businesses in Nigeria. Yeah. And this is, a, this is a very big departure from what they used to. Yeah. Uh, before now, is that they issue paper receipts, they write it with hands and give it a signature and then they, they, they have a, a copy on the booklet and they give the copy to the, to the customer. Or mm. in many cases, there, there are no even receipts issued. So we, we are trying to, to bring in a, a different culture from our experience from, mm. from Sweden to, to, the, to the Nigerian market. Yeah, but we've, yeah, been, yeah. we've been seeing a lot of resistance uh, from the people, like they want to remain analog and, and like that. Yeah, so yeah. I was just wondering, uh, if uh, these principles can be used uh, for, for a startup? So it, it's a great question, actually. I, I, I'd say yes, that's the short answer. Uh, but I'll also say, at least in a, a digital mature landscape, and Nigeria may not be digital mature from that perspective, I'm not sure, so you also may make reference to that, it's probably more analog from a mindset perspective. But if you're looking at the Western world, I actually think that uh, the mature businesses need to learn and uh, the four-step approach on outlook, decision, execution, innovation is something that is much more embedded into startups and therefore established businesses need to learn from startups and how they product create, how they set up businesses. Uh, my experience with startups here in and I'm, I'm in, in, in some, some creative startup environments, is that they think digitally from the start. They think in the lines of these processes already. And they have a very a set mindset of failing fast and failing deep because they don't have an alternative. They don't have time. They don't have resources. They don't have capacity or capabilities to test out multiple things. They have an idea. They need to make that idea global from the start and in order to do that they need to start even with smaller systems of course and simpler processes but they need to start digitally in order to get grow global from the start so my my question to you is absolutely it can it can uh, it, it can it can work in a startup environment as well and if it's not the case in nigeria i mean use it as an incubator for discussion on well, what is the uh, you know what is the um, the startup approach? Why are you so analog in your mindset? Uh, uh, because yeah, okay, Nigeria is a big market, and you got what I don't know, sixty million people uh, or something. Uh, so for sure, if you make it five, one hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy million. Wow, one hundred and seventy million, right? eighty million people. Yeah, yeah, but from a yes, purchase, purchase purchase capital perspective. Uh, okay. You, you want to get you want to get into a different market as well. You want to go uh, to Northern Africa. You want to go to Americas. You want to go to Europe. You want to go to Asia. Uh, Absolutely. And and I think I think um, yeah, use use and apply the model in the same way. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yoga, are we are we allowed to contact Soren after this course? Uh, w of course, we will have the we'll have the presentation. We'll have this recorded so we can listen to it over and over again. Are we allowed to email for questions and further questions and further materials? That's fine with me, Jörg. So you decide that. Yeah. Okay, Jörg decides. Okay. I, I, I made a link to your, I think the, the link on our homepage leads to Søren's LinkedIn page. So um, you might as well get in contact with him through, through there. Okay, thank you very much, Cost Coordinator. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for your question. And okay. um, yeah. This this is was I guess very much about um, transforming companies. It seems like Abbas, you have more an, uh, a task ahead of you on transforming uh, the mindset of uh, customers. Uh, this can be at, at least uh, as tricky um, as transforming a company, if not even harder. But um, I'm sure you will do it. Any other comments or questions or? Uh, hello, my name is Olga. Um, I have an, a question. In your presentation, you have shown that the technology that concerns customer experiences 
uh, actually rising right now. So my question is, where are the actual trends? I guess that you comment something when you were answering Vadim's question, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, probably the trend is everything that can bring the customer actually yeah. to us and to uh, ease the life for them and to yeah. improve the customer experience, but probably you can give some actual examples on measuring customer experience or any any other yeah. global trends. Yeah. yeah. Good question, Olga. I, I think I'll try to answer by going in from a different perspective, and I'll start. To, I'll start by answering uh, the, asking the question: Where should digital transformation as a process or as an organization ownership, where should that lie? And in my perspective, or in our perspective, digital transformation as an ownership should reside as to customer endpoints in organization related to customer experience to personalize. Say that pretty much all lies at least in. in can you hear me? No, you can hear me, but yeah, I cannot hear I, me. I can hear, but you're breaking. Uh, but, but they're the ones sitting with the pain points and the objectives of creating customer experience. So I, 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 th I think it's for marketing yeah. to find what is customer yeah. experience yeah. relevant to the, uh, to the organization. Yeah. And for yeah, some organization, saying. customer experience could be uh, the link between online and offline yeah. materials. It could be uh, uh, something around I purchase, uh, I purchase um, a, a goods uh, online, and when I go into the store to collect it, it's the it's an omni-channel experience. Customer for others. It uh, we've lost the sound. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. For SS in the context of SSAB, that something strange is happening. <laughs> yes, I'm back. I should be back. Back? Okay. For SSAB, it's uh, it was about uh, local. We cannot hear you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> I'm writing it in the in the text field. Anyway, it's for for them. It's about creating localized content. So whoever visits their We still can't hear, unfortunately. Jörg, are we still on? Jörg, are yes. Still, yes, we're still on. Olga, I heard you. Are you off again? Um, I'm listening. Thank you. We can hear you. Okay, excellent. How much of that? Uh, I'll, I'll try to give that point again. For SSAB, it's about creating localized content. Um, as part of their digital experience. That's where they had their pain point. So I think, it, I think it comes down to the objective of what you're trying to achieve with your digital transformation process. Uh, it's not a one size fits all. It needs to become relevant to the, to the organization. But having said that, it's normal business objective. Digital transformation is just an element of, it's just an enabler for, for achieve, achieving your business objective, being growth, being customer satisfaction, or whatever. Uh, thank you very much for your answer. Thanks. Thank you. May I please ask one more question? Yeah. Um, it's about the employee's transformation, because I suppose if the company wants to transform, employees should transform too mm -hmm. and um, i believe that not uh, everyone ready for this kind of transformation and, and, and for example in your example which you assess a b company um how how much should they uh, change their team in the company or mm -hmm. or everyone adaptized well to, to this transformation yeah so there's definitely uh, there's definitely a requirement in SSAB's case to change part of the uh, the uh, both the marketing
Excuse me, we have lost sound again. Hello? Yes. Now we're okay, here. I'm back. Uh, so, so they had to change parts of marketing and parts of, of, of IT in order to understand uh, what technology we have lost sound again from a marketing perspective or from a sales perspective the changes would be greater than from a from actual development perspective or project management project ownership No video and no sound now. I can't hear anyone. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot hear you, York. Sorry. 